All right, everyone, welcome back to the number one television program in the history of the entire universe. I am Brian Lee Durfee, author of The Forgetting Moon, The Blackest Heart, and The Lonesome Crown. All three books published by Simon & Schuster's Saga Press. Today I'm going to be reviewing with you, I'm going to be showing you all the books that I read in the month of August 2023. I've got them right here. I read 19 books in August 2023. Actually, that's... I usually read about 22 or so. So, I mean, a little bit, uh, you know, I not as big of a reading month. And I didn't realize most of them were paperbacks. I don't get that. Just happened to be the way it was. So let's just go through the books. Um, I will <clears throat> keep in mind each one of these books that I hold up is a book that I read in August of 2023. And not only did I read them, I gave them a book review on YouTube. So if you want to see my book review of Deadfall, the new book by Brad Thor, just type in my last name, Durfee, into the search bar. Deadfall by Brad Thor. The, 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 the book review will magically appear upon your, you know, phone. Which I'm assuming that's what you're watching this on. Okay. This is the first book that I read in August of 2023. Brad Thor's newest Scott Harvath thriller, Deadfall. Loved the book, left a great review of it on the channel. And then we get into a string of paperbacks that I read. I don't know why I read so many paperbacks. Usually I alternate paperback... Har that scared the shit out of me. Usually I read... Um, God, I just... I, I'm gonna... Almost all of this will be edited out, I swear. Okay. I read The Sleeping Dragon by Joel C. Rosenberg. Um, no, just Joel Rosenberg. There's no C in there. Joel Rosenberg, this is a reread. This is a book I read back a long time ago when I was in high school. I thought I would give it a reread. It was a fun little fantasy book back in the day. Still pretty much a fun little fantasy book right now. I read um, another fantasy paperback, The Darkest Day. Again, this is another reread. This is a series that I loved as a kid. I've been rereading a lot of Dennis L. McKiernan's books. This is The Darkest Day. This is book number three in his Iron Tower trilogy. Look for my review of this trilogy on the uh, YouTube. Great, great fantasy books. And then I read another fantasy paperback, and that was book number two in R.A. Salvatore's uh, Legend of Drist series of some 50-some-odd books. This is book number two. This one was called Exile. Really pretty cool book. Really liked it. And then I read another old fantasy. Um, this is, again, this is a reread from when I was a kid. Actually, I've read, I've probably read the Elric saga maybe four or five times, you know, as a kid and as an adult, and now I'm rereading them all again to leave reviews for the channel. We are to book number three in the Elric saga. This is The Weird of the White Wolf. I left a review of that on the channel. Great book. And then I read another paperback, but not a fantasy. But this is also a reread. I've been collecting the Michael Connolly, Harry Bosch series ever since the 90s. And I read this a long, long time ago, and I did a reread of it for the channel. Great, great book. Um, the Harry Bosch series is one of my favorite mystery series of all time. Michael Connolly, one of my favorite writers, too. And then we jump back into some uh, more fantasy paperbacks. Swords of Haven by Simon R. Green. This was an omnibus. This is an omnibus. This is uh, three books in one. The books are Hawk and Fisher, Winner Take All, and The God Killer. Right there at the bottom. Three books in one. They were all right. Then I read another fantasy paperback. This is a reread. One of my favorite fantasy series, the Mickey Zucker Reichert 
Renshai Chronicles. This is book number two in her Renshai Chronicles. The Western Wizard. One of my favorite fantasy series of all time. This is a reread. This is Mickey Zucker Reichert is good every time I read her. And then I got on a little bit of a King Arthur kick, and so I read a couple of King Arthur books. The first one was Taliesin by Stephen Lawhead, Stephen R. Lawhead. This is book one in his Pendragon cycle, Taliesin. A pretty cool book. This isn't about, this is not really about King Arthur. This, this isn't even about Merlin the Magician. This book starts out talking about Merlin the Magician's parents and the lost city of Atlantis. It's a pretty dope book. Another King Arthur paperback. Again, this is a book that I read when I was a kid and loved it. This is a reread as an adult. It still holds a lot of magic and enchantment, and that is The Crystal Cave by Mary Stewart. Book number one in her um, Arthurian legend four-book series. Really cool book. And then we did um, another reread of an old fantasy classic that I liked. And that is Christine Catherine Rush's The Fae, The Sacrifice, book number one in her Fae series. Um, this is called the uh, first book of the Fae, Sacrifice. Really, really cool book. You should really watch my review of this one to get a detailed insight into one of the most underrated fantasy series of all time. And then we've got uh, another reread from Taltos. This is one of the books in Stephen Brust's Vladimir Taltos series of, I think there's about 20 books in this series out now. One of my top 10 favorite fantasy series of all time, Stephen Brust. And I've read and reread these quite a bit. And then I read, this is not the book I read. I read In the Woods by Tana French. However, if you saw one of my previous YouTube videos, you know I, the copy of In the Woods that I have, or had, I don't have it anymore. The copy that I had, I put in one of those little free library boxes that just happened to be down at Dead Horse Point State Park in Archers, Park, Archers National Park um, down in Southern Utah. There was a weird one of those little free library kiosks, and I went and... I made a video. It's this. I'm not lying. This is on videotape. I actually, and I put it on YouTube, the very video where I put the Tana French book In the Woods, which is the one that I read. This is not the one that I read, but I forgot that I gave away the one that I read. So I had to hold up this one in place of the one that I read because I gave the one I read away to the little free library in Dead Horse Point State Park. Of all the random places, the Tana French. This is the, I'm going to be reading this one next, so look for this review soon. And then I read um, Coyote Waits. This is book number 11 in um, the Lephorn and Chi Navajo Tribal Police, police procedural series of mystery novels. I um, went on a trip to southern Utah, so I took a bunch of western novels with me. For the trip, just because nothing better than reading a Western novel when you're down in southern Utah in the West. Desert, desert southwest. So that leads me to Showdown at Yellow Butte by Louis L'Amour. Read that one on my little trip down to uh, southern Utah. I also read a Zane Grey novel down there. This is Wanderer of the Wasteland. A dope Dope, dope Western novel, by the way. And then I read, um, I finished out Robin Hobbs' Live Ship Traders trilogy by reading book number three, and that is Ship of Destiny. Great series, one of the best fantasy writers and fantasy series of all time. And then I also read a Dean Koontz novel. This is one of his more recent ones. This is The House at the End of the World. And last, but certainly not to be considered least, and probably my favorite read of the month, probably is going to go down into one of my top ten favorite reads of the year. And here's the thing, is I didn't actually open the pages and read this. 
This is a book that I listen to on audible.com for about an hour to an hour and a half every morning as I would take my morning walk. And I loved it because Andy Serkis narrated this book. He was a, he's, he's a magnificent voice narrator. And if you don't know who he is, he played Gollum in the Lord of the Rings movies. And he's a very accomplished actor and voice narrator of books. And even a movie director. He directed uh, parts of the Hobbit movies that Peter Jackson did. The book that I read last, the very last book I read in August 2023, my favorite read of the month, might go down as my favorite read of the year. And that is solely due to Andy Serkis's voice narration. And that book is The Silmarillion by J.R.R. Tolkien, a book that I've struggled and struggled through several times in my life, not really enjoying it that much. I think that I fell in love with this book purely based off of Andy Serkis's narration of this book. And that is my recommendation. And that is all 19 books I read in August of 2023.